Welcome to Machu Picchu. You are about to enter an ancient city of the Incas. Here there is a bus stop for buses to Aguas Calientes, the Machu Picchu Sanctuary Lodge Hotel, baggage rooms for you to travel and explore the city light, restrooms and snack bars available for the ardent travellers. And to enter Machu Picchu, you need to go through the entrance with a ticket bought in advance. Have a look at the farming terraces. The Incas turned the steep slopes into vast green steps suitable for crop growing, thanks to which the people of Machu Picchu always had plenty of food. The farming group of the city comprises over 300 terraces covering the territory of about 6 hectares. Terraces are also found on the other side of the mountain. However, the major part of them is covered with forest. Early morning llamas are brought to the slope to run on and tourists like to make photos with them. As any big city, apart from the farming terraces, Machu Picchu had colcas or storehouses. Such storehouses were set up in all the settlements of the Tawantinsuyu Empire to provide its population with clothes and things necessary for crafts, agriculture or militant activities. Moreover, reserves of foodstuffs in case of natural disasters were also kept in the colcas. It is said that the colcas were also used as accommodation for farmers cultivating the terraces. Such buildings are found in different parts of Machu Picchu, both in the farming and urban sectors. Often colcas were built near terraces. The colcas are interconnected by way of stairways, all leading to the centre of the city. The Hanan, the western area of the city, hosts the most holy places of Machu Picchu, such as the Royal Tomb, the Sun Temple, the Main Temple and the Pyramid with the Intihuatana, the sundial, crowning it. In the days of the Incas, this was the entrance to the city. The gateway was guarded by soldiers, a robust gate presumably made of tree trunks covering the opening. The scientists believe that earlier the gate was laid with golden plates or painted fabric. Inside there is a stone ring inbuilt in the wall. And to open the entrance to the city, the lower part of the gate was lifted and fixed by the big stakes so that the travellers could pass under it. To the right of the slope there are ruins of a building that could have been a sentinel house. A high wall supporting the terrace separates the sentinel house from the road and there is a quarry nearby. The entrance to the central area of the city was for the chosen ones only. The road to the temples and the palaces were guarded. To get to the city from the Incas trail one needed to pass the building the archaeologists called the Watchman Post. Two terraces and houses with inner courts are located below. The terraces are interconnected by a big stairway starting from the second gate and crossing Machu Picchu from the west to the east. The platform at the bottom of the stairway leads to both the terraces, to the temples or down to the royal tomb. According to the chronicles of the 16th century, the body of the Sapa Incas were not buried but embalmed and turned into mummies so that their descendants could come to pay tribute or to ask them for advice. The excavations carried out by Hiram Bingham in Machu Picchu produced 107 graves, a total of 156 female, male and child remains. All the graves were found in the caves but for one. There was a burial vault known as the Royal Tomb under the Sun Temple. The scientists believe it could shelter the mummy of an Inca, possibly that of Inca Pachacutec himself. The Spanish chronicles mention that the Inca's mummy was transferred from Cosco to a certain city of Patalacta, the city in the mountains. Probably this refers to Machu Picchu that has become a city mausoleum, the burial place of Inca Pachacutec. Above the tomb, a semicircular building rests on a rock pedestal. This is the Sun Temple, or Torian. In the times of the Incas, the temple was covered with thin golden plates and ornate with precious stones. If the version of the royal tomb sheltering the mummy of the ruler is true, then the temple above the tomb should contain the golden idol, the statue of Sapa Inca. However, it was never found. The surprising fact is that the boulder inside the temple shows marks of fire and heavy blows. Scientists are unable to give any explanation to that since the official history has it that the Spaniards never entered Machu Picchu and therefore could not have destroyed the temple. There is a popular belief that touching the Intihuatana rock with one's forehead will open the world of spirits. They say some people really manage to see it. The builders of Machu Picchu turned a natural hill into a terrace pyramid with square pedestal. A polygonal rock crowns the pyramid and the rock is believed to serve as a sundial. Hiram Bingham maintained that Intihuatana, the solar rock, 
was used by the Incas during the solstice to tie up the sun. The temple of the condor is associated with the hovering condor, the symbol of the Andes. Inside the temple, almost at ground level, lies a boulder in the form of an oblique triangle. The boulder is considered to symbolize a condor with its wings flung open. The northern corner of the stone represents the head of the bird with its beak pointing to a trough cut in the rock. Probably, it served for the blood to run off during sacrificial offerings. Many researchers believe that there is a direct link between the Intihuatana and the sacred rock, located in the northern part of the main plaza. It is a natural rock about three meters high with its flat surface facing the west. The irregular profile of the rock is a projection of the nearby mountains and is considered to have certain magic or religious functions. There are several rocks with engravings or petroglyphs besides the sacred rock and located nearby, a reconstruction of the Incan dwelling, two buildings with roofs covered with itchu, which is a high mountain plant. <laughs>